I've got the first story today. And this, this story is cool, especially in light of what we've talked about in the past. But according to Retail Dive, in a performance that topped analyst expectations, off-price retailer TJX on Wednesday said that its third quarter sales only fell 3.2% over the prior year, while their store comps fell 5%. But here's the story, and even bigger news, the company also announced that it will roll out e-commerce for home goods later in the year because home goods store comps actually rose 15%. And should TJX have egg on its face for now getting into e-commerce and saying it will do so publicly? I mean, they're definitely singing a different tune than they were in Q2, yeah. right? Like he was oh vehemently God. against going online, like more than anybody we've ever seen, I think. I think yeah, didn't we sh- call him out for arrogance? <laughs> it was I feel pretty like we did. It was yeah. it was pretty, pretty uh powerful statement, we'll say, especially when everybody was going online and the stores were starting to have very strict restrictions. But I think what this shows us ultimately is that you just, you cannot be reliant on one channel anymore. I mean, unless you're like somebody that's doing a flea market or a farmer's market or something, and even that those types of industries and categories are going online now, I think you have to be thinking about what your online experience is going to be and what your offline is going to be and how your customer is going to want flexibility between both of those options, especially in the home category. Now, for me, I think the biggest question that I have here is what is this online experience going to be like? Because they are 100%. light years behind everybody else in a category that we, you know, we've been talking about peer ones online. Now we have Wayfair. Now that's your go-to you have Target and Walmart and all these other places that have similar items. So what is what is the conversion going to be like? Similar items, not necessarily. Well, let's talk about that more. I don't know if sure. I totally agree on that. And there's an important nuance there, I think. But Emma, like, what do you think? Like, is this cool? Like, do you think, are you kind of like, ha ha, I told you so. Like, we were worried about it. Although I wasn't as worried about it. I thought maybe it was a good idea. I remember like people like Jason Goldberg were like, this is dumb when they were making these announcements, them, Burlington, and everybody else. But like, what, what do you think here, Emma? I think it's actually pretty cool, but for the reason that it's one of the only things I can remember actually like making a certain prediction on and being right. So I remember (laughs) I personally like roasted them back when they said they weren't going online and now they are. I definitely think you brought up the good points of it's going to be really hard to compete with Target and Wayfair and Walmart just because they have these like, they have the home goods section so like perfectly worked out. So I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen, but I will say I would I would browse the Home Goods website and I would not go into a Home Goods store during a pandemic. So yeah, that's, that's and something. I, and I think Dan's point too. I think it's important to like kind of divorce the pandemic from this, but I but it's hard to do that too. But like I think there's some things that that the pandemic has shown that I think I missed in the beginning too in the conversation about should they do e-commerce. And I think what my mind went to was should they do e-commerce in the traditional way where it's all about shipping. And I think what the pandemic has shown us is that it's actually not about that. The digital is so much more than that. Digital is about an interaction point. And to me, what you guys are hitting on, it's more about accessibility. And so I think if I post you, and the point about that I want to make too, the product is different from what you get at a Target. Walmart. Remember, I ran home furnishings for e-commerce for Target. Like the product here is different. It's about the fine. It's about the unexpected. You know, it's the things the manufacturers want to get rid of that they can't sell through those normal channels, right? So it's, it's always changing and it's always dynamic. But I think if you think about digital, and that's why yeah, you're right, like how they do this is going to matter. But if you said, if I could wake up on a Saturday, if I'm a home goods shopper and I could wake up on a Saturday, see what's in my local store, all those cool finds, those treasure hunts, and then be able to reserve them online for pickup, I think people would totally do that. I think that's cool. That's different. And that's not shipping. And that's not super expensive for you either. So we'll see where they take this. But that got me thinking this morning about, oh my God, there's a lot of other retailers that can do this. And that's a lesson coming out of the pandemic. It's not shipping. It's about accessibility, giving your consumers what you want. And you're shaking your head. What are you Yeah, I mean, like I, think that, yes. I think that you just opened up a new opportunity for me, but I am also still very very concerned about whether or not that's going to be something that people are going to be able to do with this site. Like, can you, do we know for a fact that they'll be able to see exactly what's in, you know, my five surrounding stores? 
when we think about the complexity, they've never, they, until a qu one quarter ago, they were saying that they're not going to focus on this. And this is yeah. a hell of a lot of product to, to tag, to like, make sure it's showing up correctly, to make sure it's showing up in the right places. And right. then thinking That's about the shipping right. dynamics of, easy. is it, is it all going to ship from your local store? Can you pick it up? Like if that can be executed, brilliant move TJX. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it can be. I, I know it's day one and I always get criti criticized for this, so I'll give it some time, but I think that's the dream, picking it up and seeing what's available in your local store. I just don't think that when people go to the home goods site, the, the search that they're used to seeing on other home furnishings sites is so much better because it's, they've had the time to learn how customers are shopping. And so that hunt, I think, translated into a, an experience online is going to be a very challenging one for a company that is just coming online. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the, the Wayfair analogy or target or Walmart analogy, it's, it's a different funnel, right? Like you're coming into it in a different mindset than you would be when you're shopping traditional home furnishings. It's almost like you said, like the treasure hunt. I think that's what's unique to me about this is it's almost like you, we've talked a lot about how off price is hard to do online. But if you start combining the aspects of like order, pick up your local store, the treasure hunt, get it while it's hot. Maybe there's a new way to do this. Now, are they sure. doing that? I, I don't know, but it gets gets me excited. I don't know, Emma, are you as yeah. excited as I am? Like, I'm, I'm pretty jacked. Probably not as excited as you, but just a little That's, excited. Not, not That's possible, true. Just, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get past an 11, right? I'm, I'm kind of an 11 on this. I think this is, this is cool. I think it has implications for, like, the apparel retailers that are in this business, too. Like, you know, people line up at those stores to get in there, you know, on certain days. Like if you could create that kind of fever phenomenon ahead of time,